Hey everybody, it's Bob Crossan, Senior Managing Editor of Water and Waste Digest. Today I am blessed to have with me Vanessa Leiby. She's the Executive Director for the Water and Wastewater Equipment Manufacturers Association. She and I have talked about a lot of Washington stuff over the over the years, and we're going to relay some of that conversation with you today so that you have some, some tools and understanding of what's going on. Thank you so much for your time. I, it's it's great to be able to talk to you because we haven't really been able to meet each other in person for so long um, and do kind of a one-on-one -on -one talk. But yeah, how, how are things with you and wh what's going on in Washington as it relates to water? What are, what are you hearing? Oh, well, hi, Bob. It's um, a pleasure to be here. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to see you and be able to chat about some of these issues. Um, you know, we've, we've, we're kind of slowly starting to get out of this pandemic and we're starting to see things pick up a lot. Um, one of the great things that we saw was that um, because the water industry was um, designated as an essential um, function. Um, a lot of our people were still able to work. And so from a manufacturing perspective, that continued on, which was really good in that, at least from a manufacturer's perspective, um, it really helped make a better, uh, better year than I think what they were expecting with the pandemic. And one of the messages that came out of that was really the importance of water. So we had to have water for hand washing, for sanitation, for doing so much. And so I think that really elevated um, the importance and value of water um, to the much larger public. And so I think we're seeing that kind of energy and that kind of excitement um, permeate now into the Washington DC area with the new Biden administration and with their priorities. Um, we've got Radhika Fox, who we all know really well from her leadership at the US Water Alliance, who's now over at EPA, um, heading up the water program there. And so we've got a lot of people in important places um, today that really value water. And so we're really excited about seeing how we can move forward um, as an industry on a lot of different topics and make sure water is key to those conversations. So it's an exciting time. There's a lot going on. Yeah, I was going to say in March, I was I recount this to a lot of people. March felt so dense with water info with like with the infrastructure report card the ucmr5 we had the lead and copper rule stuff that got to, that got pushed uh, to later in the year and then obviously ended with biden's infrastructure plan so there's just so much going on in just that month alone and it feels like the first half of this year there's been a lot of focus from uh fr from legislators regulators and from the epa on on what their water plans are what, what seem to be the key talking points that you're hearing from like congressional people and stuff like that when it comes to water since it's obviously a big part of this infrastructure plan that Biden wants to get. Yeah, I think that there's a number of major themes that have been emerging over the last number of months. And a lot of these relate to other sectors, not just water, but infrastructure for sure. I mean, we, we've seen so much um, going on back and forth, as you mentioned, from um, President Biden's infrastructure plan to a number of plans that have been introduced into Congress, Republicans scaled back very conservative plans to very broad, enormous um, infrastructure is more than just pipes and roads and bridges. It's social infrastructure as well that we see from the current administration and, and uh, Democrats in Congress. So, so there's a, a lot that's going on um, right now in this area. And we're just, we're really enthusiastic about um, the opportunity we might have and see for water. So infrastructure is a big one that we're following. Jobs is probably right up there. And we've seen um, uh, uh, and heard a lot about the shortages of finding the right people for the right jobs. And there's an, an enormous push really at the national level with groups like the US Chamber of Commerce, National Association of Manufacturers, even the Department of Commerce to really start to hone in on what are the shortages um, that we're facing in the labor market across the board, including manufacturing and water, and how are we going to close that gap? So labor and jobs is a big issue that we've been um, hearing a lot about. Another one, uh, which um, is going to be very important, I think, is the Buy America, Buy American concept. Um, we've learned to live with that with the American Iron and Steel on the drinking water and wastewater side, 
but the legislation that we've seen introduced and that just passed yesterday with um, Senator Schumer's bill, that had 50 or 60 pages of Buy American language that dramatically expands um, what falls under the purview and um, will expand what those requirements are gonna be. And so that's gonna be a huge talking point. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm for, for that expansion from both the Biden administration and the Democrats in Congress. Whether they clearly understand what the downsides of this is potentially going to be, we're trying to educate about. But that's a big piece. Um, with regard to um, the regulatory topics that seem to be important and have that crossover with um, the legislative side, um, lead and copper, and particularly the focus when we see a lot of money on going to water, um, you have to dig deeper and understand what that money is going to be where significant amount of funding is going to remove lead service lines. So it's where you thought, oh, this is going for all these drinking water programs and issues. No, this, these billions are going to replace service lines, lead service lines. So, so that lead service line replacement has been a real big battle cry um, for Congress as well as EPA. Um, PFAS is, is just not going to go away. And we've seen um, you know, the agency taking some preliminary action and kind of being forced to take stronger action. So um, those two seem to be um, fairly large issues that kind of cross uh, across um, water and waste and um, a lot of other sectors, chemical sectors. I mean, th it's a broad um, issue. Yeah. Cybersecurity is another one. And normally we wouldn't think too much about talking about that from the water side, but we've all obviously seen you know, it can happen to, you know, a drinking water or wastewater facility. And so cybersecurity, I think, has become really front and center. Um, the concept from water, at least, for equity and affordability and environmental justice um, are big issues for both the Biden administration and um, a number of, of um, members in Congress, particularly the Democrats. Um, and we're seeing, and um, that's really a, a huge issue for Radica Fox. That's a lot of her background, is that whole equity, affordability, um, and water um, figures in very prominently um, with that. And um, I think that's. I'll stop there for the purposes <laughs> of conversation. But I think those are some of the major themes that we're we're kind of experiencing right now. Yeah, I'll have to. We we should. I should try and pick your brain a little bit later this year and we could just talk only on the buy america stuff because i think that that deserves its own conversation to talk about just kind of the ramifications that that has across kind of the whole sector because it's it sounds small but it can be so big um and i know that with american iron and steel that made a lot of changes as well um and yeah like you said the the access affordability equity those seem the all key terms that radica has been a champion for for many years and now it's part of the EPA's language is a huge shift as well. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of uh, in terms of funding and stuff like that, there's a, several bills that are kind of going on right now. We've seen a couple that have passed through committee. Obviously, Biden's infrastructure plan wasn't a bill so much as kind of a framework to give an idea of what he'd be looking for to pass and stuff like that. Um, what seem to be kind of like the most promising things currently? Are those things that have already passed committee in a good place? Or do you think they're kind of dead on arrival? Um, what's, what's the next? What, what, what should we be looking at in terms of that? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think they're really all across the board right now. Um, and I think people are trying to figure out what the guardrails are to coin a term that's been used a lot lately. Um, we have the president's infrastructure um, bill, which is quite large. And then we had the foil to that was Republicans much more streamed out, streamlined. And then we have the Democrats in the house that have a fairly large um, agenda and and um, funding mechanism, and so some so I mean it changes on practically a daily basis. I mean there's negotiations going on um, all the time now between the Biden administration and some of the key leadership in Congress. They they recently within the last couple um, weeks had kind of settled down on could we stick with a trillion dollars. 
and you come down off your almost three, I'll come up from almost my half that much, and we'll meet in the middle. And those negotiations have have right now kind of taken uh, fallen apart a bit. And I think the president is looking to reach out. That was with um, uh, Shelley Moore Cap Capito. Um, I think he's trying to reach out to a broader bipartisan. And it's interesting, and this is a little bit of an aside, but I think a lot of people coming into the year were thinking with um, a Democratic administration, Democrats controlling the House, and in essence, by a slim one vote controlling the Senate, that it, it was everything was going to be railroaded through. And we've seen that is absolutely not the case that within each of these parties, they have a spectrum of um, folks with different philosophical approaches. And so, you know, they've got to cater to their own base and find that middle ground. And particularly with the Democrats, with the real aggressive um, uh, progressives and liberals versus some that are moderate to conservative. And so it hasn't, it hasn't been a slam dunk that some people thought that it could be. And so what it's really is kind of leading to is can we get bipartisan agreement? Can we cross the aisles? Can we find some common ground where we can work together? And I think that's what President um, Biden would really like to do, particularly on infrastructure. He didn't want to railroad something through, but I think, um, you know, so he's trying a couple of different approaches now. Um, I think we're going to end up in the end, I think we're going to end up with more than we had hoped for, um, because I think it, with every negotiation, it kind of comes down to the middle road somewhere along the way. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think what we've seen for water is in general, a real interest in um, increasing funding for water. So some of the bills that we've seen come through Congress um, are looking at two to three times um, uh, uh, addition to the SRFs, then others will come back and say, well, how, how are the states and utilities going to be able to use that much money that fast? So, um, but we are seeing, we are seeing definitely willingness to double or triple the size of both the drinking water and the clean water SRFs, which is really positive. In the president's budget that was just released um, this last week, I think, um, there was definitely an increase in funding across the board for EPA and for all the water programs um, within EPA. So not huge, you know, not a double or tripling, but um, an increase that that's great. So, so I think there's support across the board for it, which is positive because, you know, historically we're, we're always scrambling to try to get money put into the program because they say, oh, SRFs are really popular. We'll cut them out of the president's budget. And then we all out here on the, in the hinterlands have to run up and try to say, no, 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 put SRS back in. So, so there's support, there's support for the programs. And I think there's support for more money in the programs. We just have to get the legislation through um, to make it happen. And certainly, you know, the president's budget has indicated that he wants to increase the funding um, at some level. Yeah, well, that kind of leads right into what, what we wanted to touch on next, which is kind of like the barriers to getting these things through. And the, the core barrier from me looking as an outsider who's not like actually in Washington is how are we going to pay for this? <laughs> it tends to be the, the number one thing. But there's also a lot of it seems like regional and state specific, even city specific issues that some of these Congress people are bringing up when it comes to water as well, and that they want to make sure that their community is accounted for in these grander, bigger, uh, bigger schemes of things, right? right. So what, what seem to be like the core, those core barriers, obviously just how are we going to pay for it is kind of number one, I would think. But are there other smaller things like what I described that seem like they, um, they're creating- Well, how that, to pay for it, it definitely is. And, you know, originally with the um, President Biden's proposal, he was looking at a corporate tax increase, which he's got a lot of pushback on, but I think has indicated that he'd be willing to scale that down some. And I think that's, we're having more of that conversation, I think, in Congress, where the Republicans are putting forward a much more conservative package, for example, in the Senate, where they think they can pay for it with maybe some retooling of some extra pandemic money or something like that. I don't think there's a lot of 
interest, maybe even across the aisles for a huge tax increase on, um, on corporate America. I think some increase might be possible, um, but you know, there's, there's so many factors that are kind of working for and against each other. You just have to be careful about where, where you move it, but where you find the money is actually, you know, really one of the big issues. And a lot of it is, can you, can you redesignate funds that are out there already? And, and that's ultimately, you know, can you do, can you do gasoline tax increase? Can you do, you know, there's been a lot of conversation particularly when we talk about infrastructure for roads and bridges, um, miles driven, mm -hmm. um, uh, as opposed to you know, gasoline prices or something like that, figuring that everyone then that uses the roads will have to pay somehow. So I, I think they have to get a little more creative about um, where that money's gonna come from. If they think they're, if you know, the Democrats in particular think they're gonna find all this money. I mean, somehow we seem to have found it for the pandemic um, but then you kind of ask how much more, how much more, you know, how much more money do you have in the closet over there? You know, we, mm -hmm. we, we managed to get through this because it was obviously a national and international crisis, but you know, mm -hmm. where we get the money is going to be the key thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that like ultimately depends on the, the price tag of the, of whatever gets passed as well too. Cause like, if it's a fairly big one, that's going to change the, the funding mechanisms and stuff like that, I would imagine as well. So that the bigger it is, the more conversations there's going to be on this topic. <laughs> and the other thing that's kind of interesting is um, because of the dynamic, um, particularly in the Senate, um, there's different routes that you can get legislation through with, with and without the filibuster coming into play. And I'm not an, an, an expert in all of this, but apparently I read recently that the um, parliamentarian just announced that the Democrats would have just one more bill this year that they could get through without worrying about a filibuster. And so then the conversation switches back to, if we only have one last bite of the apple, are we, are we gonna go big? And is this going to be infrastructure? And are we just going to say, throw it all in there and we're going to push it through? So there's just there's just an incredible amount of, of dynamics and yeah. behind the scenes things going on. It's lots of intrigue, but yeah. um, I'm sure for a, a political scientist or whatever, it's probably fascinating. Yeah, the nuance, the strategy, the tactics, all that kind yes. of stuff has got to be really fascinating for the, those political science. So I don't know if I answered your question, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think it does answer the question. Like it, the fact that it's so complicated is an answer in and of itself of why it's yeah. such a challenge, right? right. Um, it's just a tremendously complicated process. Um, I wanted to uh, try and get to kind of the last two questions here, which is kind of like the uh, how much water infrastructure is kind of being talked about on the hill obviously infrastructure in general is but where how much how big of a piece does water play in there and when they are talking about that are they focused more on that legislative side of this funding of infrastructure bills and stuff like that or are they more focused on that regulatory side of like dealing with PFAS dealing with um, issues in Florida with like algae, algae, algae blooms and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, uh, and the drought in the west even too you know water resources out there so there's um, I guess my, my my question is, how often are we hearing about water infrastructure compared to the other ones out there? And then two, are they more focused on that legislative side, on that money thing, or are they more focused on this regulatory stuff of like, how can mm -hmm. we solve regulatory issues? Well, it's interesting. And um, some of it gets to the point where, um, of jurisdiction, where like in the house, we've got drinking water in one committee and wastewater in the other. In the Senate, we've got both in EPW. And so they were able to get S914 um, passed through the, the Senate and moved on to the House. And that was that was a fairly broad bill with huge support from NAM, from Chamber of Commerce, from I think the water associations too. It didn't have any poison pills in it, it didn't have any expansion of Buy American, um, but it addressed the whole pie. So it was both the legislative piece um, and of infrastructure, but then also the regulatory piece. And I, and I think they, it, they managed to do it in such a way that it was palatable for like everyone and those, so they could get it through. 
And what we see now are, you know, 16 pieces of disparate legislation, you know, one on PFAS, one on lead, one on, you know, this and one on that. And so um, the House actually just had a, a hearing a week or two ago. They had Jennifer McLean from EPA over and there were like 14 or 15 bills. Um, and this was just on the in the drinking water side, not wastewater. And they were trying to, I think, to pull all those bills together and figure out, could we make it one big bill or what are the good pieces of this one and that one? And, and so it is a huge challenge, but man, there's a lot of legislation that's been introduced <laughs> for, for both the drinking water and, and the wastewater. But the Senate in some ways has a little bit easier road if they can get their acts together and agree because they really just have the one committee that has to deal with now of course you have to deal with the appropriators or the off the appropriators or the authorizers right so they can authorize billions of dollars but then you also then have to go to the appropriating committees and say will you give us the billions of dollars that we need so it's a complex dance that um has to work its way through um for for anything to ultimately end up with a prop any of us to get a product a bill out that the president can sign, but um, it's not for lack of effort um, and trying. <laughs> and so, so I would say that um, water has had a lot of um, the captured a lot of the discussion and has been seen as an important part of it. I mean, we're still going to be minuscule compared to probably monies compared to what they would want for roads and bridges and things like that. But, but we're part of the conversation, which hasn't always been the case yeah well and that that's good to hear and it is something that i feel like i hear from a lot of people um in the industry a lot of leaders who've been with the industry for a long time too that there is it seems like a renewed focus in a way that mm -hmm. it hasn't been for the past even 10 years really um so it, it it feels kind of rejuvenating for a lot of a lot of folks i think so i think so yeah um I, I guess last question here is just kind of more i guess more rapid fiery than uh than anything is uh you know like if there were three key takeaways that you would want uh our audience like to to take away from all that we're talking about here today what would those three takeaways be what can they expect to see in quarter three and quarter four of this year um i think i think infrastructure for sure i think we're gonna find a way to make something happen there um, I think so. I think we have to keep our eyes open for that. I think we really do have to um, better understand um, the exp potential expansion on the Buy American um, provisions and what the implications of that are for um, every manufacturer and every consumer who's going to be buying these products because ultimately increases in prices flow down to you and me and the people buying um, the product. So we have to kind of understand that. Um, and then I, th I think that we really are, are going to see some more action on some of those critical pieces of lead service line and, and PFAS. Um, if anything, it's going to at least force EPA to move quicker than they, they probably want to or have the science to, but they're going to still continue to get a lot of pressure. And, and I think jobs, you know, working it, feel, it feels like we actually have a lot of people in positions to help make change happen. And uh, the US Chamber um, just had a, they've got a new initiative called America Works. And um, they're working on with very closely with the new um, director of the uh, Department of Commerce, um, Gina Raimondo, who was the um, past governor for Rhode Island. And she had initiated a, a work um, uh, initiative in Rhode Island, trying to get certain, um, uh, uh, certain people back into the workforce and finding those skills and matching those skill sets. So I, so I think you know, we're gonna really see um, labor um, contributing significantly to the dialogue because we can't find um, the right people. And if you can't find the right people, you can't make products and then you can't sell it because you don't have it made. And um, I, I think we're going to have to find some solutions there. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it. I think the workforce thing is definitely its own interview at a later date. Uh, I, I've been talking to several people about that. We're, we're, we're considering doing some, some heavier stuff on that as well in the future. Um, and then obviously I would love to talk to you more about this Bioamerica thing and to just dive a little deeper into just that because I, I think there's a lot that we could talk about there and kind of the implications it means not just for the manufacturers in the, in the utility space but for the utilities themselves. So um, thanks again. I appreciate all your, all, all your time. Absolutely. Uh, for everyone who's watching, um, we'll leave some links to some Wima resources down in the description, so check those out. Um, and again, to Vanessa, thank you once more. Really great to talk to you again. Yeah, terrific, Bob. It's nice to, to see you, and hopefully we'll be doing that in person sometime soon. Oh, crossing my fingers. <laughs> yes. <laughs>